by what Erling Haaland's delivered already. But what's impressed you most about him since he's been here? And what further improvement do you believe he's capable of now? I think uh, we, everyone talk a lot. So we are delight and hopefully he, he feels good, comfortable being here. Is it his work ethic, though, as well, Pep, the fact that he's made this adjustment? I mean, what do you see within him day to day that has made that adjustment to Premier League football relatively straightforward, certainly from our point of view, anyway, looking at it? I have another opinion about that, so we didn't have doubt, and especially we had just one month or one month of competition, so many games are still to come and many years, so so we're still margin to improve, to, to be a better player, and we're working on that. You've now got six games in 18 days as well, and you've spoken of the need over that period to maybe rest Erling Haaland. I just wonder what you're seeing from Alvarez, that when it comes to that decision to rest Haaland, it'll be made that little bit easier because of what you're seeing from Alvarez. Yeah, definitely. When, when Erling maybe we think doesn't play, he's going to play Julian. Yeah, that's almost... almost sure. <laughs> What are those qualities that you're seeing from Alvarez, that, uh, as I say? We are, all of us, we are really impressed for the guy, for the pace, for the sense of goal, for the, the work ethic, yeah, for many things. You spoke again about Bernardo Silva after the weekend, seeing the importance that he has within this squad. Um, are you now at the stage where he, along with no one else, you can say, will be leaving before that transfer deadline? And in turn, what the likelihood is that you could further add to your squad before that deadline as well? With Bernardo, it's everything I've said many times, so how important it is for us. And just one or two days, finally, the transfer window will be over and everyone will be focused on what you have to do. Can you categorically say no more business for yourselves? No, I don't know. I don't just, know what's going to happen. Okay. Just finally for me, Pep, obviously, when you look at the defensive record at the minute, I just wonder what concerns you have over the fact that you've trailed by two goals in four of your last six league meetings now, going back to last season, of course. Yes, yeah, yes, we had to try to avoid it. Uh, in one term, it's good because in the past, in the last years, always when we were down, we were difficult to come back. Now we had, uh, we proved last season, this season we can do it, but we have to try to avoid it as much as possible to go in vantage and try to handle or manage this situation. The positive is you've lost none of those four where you have trailed by two goals. Yeah, but it's risk. So one day we'll not be able to come back. Hi, Pep. It's seven years ago to the day since Kevin De Bruyne signed for Manchester City. There were some people who didn't think he would be a success here. But have you been surprised, even yourself, at just how much of a success he's been and how much he <coughs> is important to this club? Well, it was a, a really good sign for Man City. So seven years is many, many years. Has done brilliantly. So since then... <coughs> Before came here, I knew it from from Germany. I saw for him when I was in Bayern. He was in Wolfsburg, and many games I saw for him. And the light that uh, how he has performed in, in this time. Uh, Nottingham Forest have signed 18 players, spending about 150 million pounds. How much does that say about the ambition that they have to stay in the Premier League this season? Do you think? Well, show a lot. Sure about uh, this, uh, what the club want to be. I'm pretty sure that means I want to stay in the Premier League for many, many years. It's a historical club, no doubts about that. Many years was not there, and uh, yeah, so it's a new, new, new team, a new team with the same style the last season, and uh, yeah, it's another game at home with our people. Try to do a good game. Pep, do you, do you think conceding goals is a consequence of the way that you attack? Because if you didn't concede and you scored all the time, it would be perfect. No. So uh, you say as much attack, that's why you concede? The more, the more you attack and push for forward players, then the chances are that other teams can break on you sometimes. After six years, you do this question, six seasons. So all we have done like this, and our, our level to concede goals was Mina. It's the quality, when some distractions, or 
still we have to do it, but it's completely the opposite. As much far away you are, you go, you are safer. And we prove it this six, seven years that a part of winning the, the Premier League, we concede few chances and we concede few, few, few goals in playing that way. So we are going to just something, we have to just something. It's normal in that period and it's going to happen. So always we concede few. Last game against Crystal Palace, we concede few. So one corner, one free kick, one shoot in the first half, no more than that. So that is brilliant. But set piece is an important part of the game as well. The transition is an important part of the game. But what we have done, I understand this question in my first season and second season. But after six, seven, what we have done playing this way, I think because we concede goals, score goals, but we attack more, is honestly no sense. I just, it just seems as though you've adjusted something and you are even more of an offensive threat. Does that mean that no. at the back you, there are issues that you have to address? There are things that are not Always, quite always we out. score a lot of goals, we concede few these years, otherwise we cannot win the Premier League, that's for sure. And now we are scoring, yeah, a lot of goals as well, but in the same time we are conceding a lot. And if we don't stop that, it will be difficult. Yes. Not all the time you can score four or five goals to win the game for one or two margins. So you have to be better in in that in that situation, especially in two concepts like the opens are so so important and and and, and difficult is the transitions and the set pieces. And in that, if we don't control it, we are going to suffer. I um, back to De Bruyne. Uh, seven years ago to this day he signed for the club uh, but li uh, likes of Phil Thompson and Paul Merson said that the world is going mad with the transfer fee and it was bonkers what do you say about that now when you've seen him in City? Everything is open to, to talk and to say his opinion we have to, to accept it in the good things we are good in the bad things we are bad and the people maybe didn't know him and, and that's why the haters you know they are open to, to do it. So important is uh, he was calm, he's calm, will be calm. To do a job on the pitch is the most important thing. You saw him in Bayern. You, s of course, <laughs> have had a lot of use, with, use of him here in City. Uh, can you tell us exactly uh, what makes him so extremely important uh, besides the numbers, of course, that we see? I think you we see John the TV. You see how he plays, define Kevin perfectly for himself the way he plays, not necessarily to take to talk about his his incredible talent, his work ethic and his commitment with the club, with the mates, with everyone. He's a busy captain already. So there's no doubt about that. So this type of players they are too good, you have to watch it what they do, not necessarily words. Just how is Kevin? Watch the games and you will discover him. And I think a lot of people is wondering if Arling is going to play tomorrow or when when are you going to rest him uh, considering the, the match program in the future? Tomorrow you will see, you will see it. <laughs> okay. Last question for me. Uh, we saw Gundogan uh, came in from the bench last uh, match, had a great impact. Um, what can you say about him and the relations with, with Arling and, and the burner with Arling? Another player, many years together, so the impact in... Uh, in the team is always positive. Is uh, especially this season I had the feeling he has started really, really, really well. Uh, last game, I didn't agree. Have some niggles in his leg before the game against Crystal Palace. I didn't want to take risks for the amount of games that we have. He could have played, but I didn't want to take risks. Have been so important so far, not just in terms of goals and assists and many, many things. So, Gundo have been like Kevin, like uh, Bernardo, like many, many players. So important. Uh, just to follow up on what you were being asked about Julian, um, just basically because like in every minute that he's been involved, he's been great. And what's the thing that probably have surprised you the most since, since the first day that you had him? How good he is. I know him a little bit on TV, clips, games in River Plate, surprised how good he is. Because I think that you mentioned like in the past seasons that Gabriel Jesus was like one of the best like strikers with the pressing and with the off the ball movements. Um, but with, with what we have seen of Julian so far, like in Barcelona and some and in some games, um, he's like really good in the pressing uh, as yeah. well. Do you think that he can reach that kind of level of elite level in that regard as well? Yeah, definitely. So humble and always positive and. Uh, Every training session, they give everything, and I like this type of players. And uh, 
and the impact was in precision. And now when he played the minutes in the competition, when he came in in Batman Kamno, who could do a hat trick without the problems, he was involved in two goals last game, always behind the, the close the balls, like to have a sense to be in the right position, the right moment. So uh, when he dropped, he had quality to play. We had the light. I know the people are talking a lot of hurling and we are pleased on that, but Julian is an exception, an exceptional player.